Welcome to Velocity, the Vista Chamber podcast. I'm your host, Chamber CEO Rachel Beld, and it's my privilege to interview the movers, shakers, and change makers impacting the Vista community and beyond. Today, my guest is Colin Tappy, owner and operator of Standards Records on Broadway in downtown Vista. Colin's a North County native and has been making downtown Vista much cooler since 2012 when he opened Standards. Welcome, Colin. Hiya. Hi. Um, so I want to know first up, um, h- how did you come to love records? Was it a love of music that then became records or did, did the records come before the music? Like what happened? How did that happen? Yeah, I would say, um, the love of music kind of comes before everything else. And it's something that sort of gets, um, lost in the sauce. Let's say when you're in the business of business, you know, when you're selling something it gets very product you know, oriented, it's uh, price points and all that kind of stuff. But um, ultimately, I think the records do serve the music. And when I was getting into records uh, around like the late 90s, it was just, I was getting so deep into uh, punk music and like hardcore music. And the at that point, you know, this would have been like the late 90s, mid 90s. So like, you know, the biggest bands in the world are like Green Day, Offspring, no doubt. There's a lot of that stuff everywhere. And I was just trying to get as far away from that as I could and get like deeper and deeper into uh, underground music. And I think the really only way to listen to that music at that point was to get records because, you know, that's, I think, how a lot of, in retrospect, whether they were conscious or not, I think that's how a lot of that wave of music was differentiating itself from the stuff at the mall, you know, because you can't sell split seven inch records at a Sam Goody at the time. Right. You know, so you had to use a little bit more um, clever tactics to obtain these things. So once I figured out how to do that, I was just all in and that just became my obsession. Again, ultimately, you know, it was to the format was to serve the medium. It was a means to get, uh, you know, deeper into the music. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that either wasn't on vinyl. And this is going to be a a real humdinger for uh, some folks that didn't live through the era, but records were a lot cheaper. Like mm-hmm. the record would be eight ninety nine, and the CD would be like twelve ninety nine, or you know, higher even. So it was like a economical choice. Now, of course, it's ironic because a record will be like forty bucks, and mm-hmm. the CD will be uh, found under a you know <laughs> couch somewhere. Right. You'll just stumble across it. People will throw CDs from you from the the, the side of the road. But uh, at the time, it was like, yeah, I don't want to pay big money for this. I'll go buy a, a, a cheap record, and so. Yeah, it was all very pragmatic means of uh, hearing the music that I was interested in. And of course, kind of that led to gone and being able to go backwards. You know, you're in the record store, you're looking for, which uh, growing up in Esco would have been like Gary's Record Paradise at the time. You okay. know, you'd go in looking for whatever insane punk music. But of course, they, you know, maybe have like a Thin Lizzy or record or a Black Sabbath record. So accidentally, that's how I ended up getting into a lot of like classic rock and kind of having a somewhat foundational understanding of uh like the music that came before me was just going into thrift stores and record shops and um yeah since then it's just i don't know i mean like i said music has always kind of been the focus and this the records are a natural um offshoot of that that makes sense yeah did you did you have a lot of music in your home like were your did your parents play musical instruments or were you always you know, having a kitchen dance party with your mom or any of that kind of stuff? Was music a big part of your family? Not really. I think um, the idea of music fandom and the role that music plays in culture has kind of changed a lot. So I don't think it holds the same weight now to be like a, like into like a rock music fan. (laughs) Like Mm -hmm. that doesn't, I don't know if that, like, it's like, yeah, everyone likes that. But like my mom um, just followed bands that were on the radio pretty closely, you Mm -hmm. know, but she was she was hip man. She had cool taste. She was into like my my first concert was uh, Guns N' Roses and Metallica and like Whoa, that's a good first concert. Yeah, I mean, there's some downsides when your mom's a rocker. You know that maybe uh, you you wind up in a therapist's office uh, decades later to sort well, out. But my that's, first was Amy Grant. So also go. I'm next to you on the couch. Okay, there, so, so yeah, we're both. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, you know, I was I was put onto <laughs> stuff, and I think because she was a fan of the music and was a fan growing up, because she would talk about seeing you know. Zeppelin and all these kind of heavy bands in the 70s. She was like the generation right after the hippies, you know? So like, you know, Neil Young and a lot of that kind of stuff was like foundational music for sure. But she just kind of kept going through like the K-Rock days. So there was like 
Clash and Oingo Boingo and stuff like that uh, growing up. And then when hair metal hit, it was that. And, you know, at some point I kind of had to find an identity for myself, I guess, which is normal when you yeah. hit puberty or whatever. And that's when like the heavy metal and punk stuff came in. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think she definitely instilled an importance of like being committed to music and a, a music fandom, you know, going to concerts, wearing the shirts, putting the stickers on your car, like being a, uh, she, she kind of showed me that. Um, but I wouldn't say, you know, it wasn't like, you know, living with Thurston Moore or something where you're just getting like, you know, fed spiritual jazz records from the seventies right. and like cumbias are playing, uh, you know, and they're mailing ordering 45s or anything like that. It, it was just, you know, uh, someone who really, uh, loved, uh, good rock music, I guess. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so you're in a band. Yes. What instruments do you play? I'm a singer. So I'm oh, a you're a singer. Yeah, yeah. So your voice is your yes, instrument. Yes. As okay. You can hear. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. And so, um, um, what kind of music does your band play? Uh, I'm in, I'm in two bands. One's a little bit more, uh, uh, hardcore and the other's a little bit more, slightly more metal. Um, so, you know, just the same, kind of the same, uh, music that I was playing and listening to when I was in high school. I've not developed much as a person, you can, as you can tell. <laughs> So does your band play like gigs or yeah. you just like, you like hang out or? Oh uh, I mean, yeah, we play. I mean, we put out records and stuff like that. Oh, that's whoa. another thing that put me to records is like, you know, like when Bill Clinton was in office, we were like pressing seven inches ourselves and, you know, like that's trading cool. them with labels across the world and stuff like uh, hardcore as a subculture, like um, it's very like involved. Like you have to kind of do things. It's not necessarily just, it's not like, being a fan of, um, you know, someone on the radio where it's just, you're there to consume, you know, you, you, they, they sell you by. It's a community, you know, so you're very involved in kind of doing things um, yourselves to get this out there for other people who are kind of like-minded, you know, so it's not, there's elements of commerciality in terms of like promotion and distribution and, you know, making uh, these objects and everything, but it's, closer to kind of a bohemian artsy kind of thing than it is like you you get the management and you get the fest and you mm -hmm. play the charts and all that and it's it's a little embarrassing being in my 40s and like you know yelling in you know noisy bands like that especially since I've been doing it for a very long time um but I think you'd have to kind of be involved in the culture like from that community to kind of get it um but yeah, we're, we're, we're active <laughs> in the community. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. Very niche community. But All right. We'll have to put a link to, to sure. your band info in the show notes for sure. Go. Okay. So I have to ask, um, are you, are you a personal collector of records? And if so, how big is your collection? Um, yeah, I mean, that's like, I've, I, I distinguish between like collecting and just having records in terms of, uh, a collector is sort of very, it's the object is what's okay. important. So you not know? using it necessarily. Right. Okay. Or even maybe not necessarily not using it, but let's say, you know, having a proper A1, B1 stamped mono white label promo version of XYZ album. Okay. And that's what there's different ways people collect. You know, I'm not too, I used to be very pedantic about those sort of things, but I just kind of have a lot of records at this point. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know how many, you know, like. But you have ones that you want to use you yeah, want to yeah. listen to them They're, you don't just exactly. have them to have them yeah yeah okay. and it's like you yeah. know it's weird too because you know this stuff that i'm interested in is so niche like i could show you you know this oh i hunted for years for this and it would just be like you know it'd be like showing you you know uh, uh a piece of abstract art or something you know when like it doesn't it, I, I i can't be all like oh here's a signed uh beatles thing i, I don't know why that's what people can connect to right, <laughs> so right. so it's not really like something that i could be like look at all this cool stuff i have or have like an instagram account where i show off all my things it's it's just so uh it's just sort of you know catered to what i'm interested in so yeah it's personal to you yeah there's a bunch yeah. of records but i don't know that it's like you know a collection per okay se. got it okay so i want to talk a bit about the store yes so when you, um, and I know you worked at a record store before you opened Standards. Mm -hmm. And so when you decided, hey, I'm going to open a record store, why did you choose Vista? Like you're not from, right, right. I mean, you're from Escondido yeah, and you live yeah. in North County, but like why Vista? Why was it the choice? Um, you know, the I was uh, working, which is to say, you know, just 
sort of imposing myself upon uh, this spot in Fullerton. A friend of mine runs it called uh, Radiation Records. And I was just kind of needed, uh, uh, I was just needed something to do, <laughs> you know, and I, I was, the, the, the guy who owns it is a, is a friend. So I was just like, let me just do stuff there. And I just kind of bullied my way into doing stuff there. And uh, that was for a while. But of course, you can imagine that commute is not ideal. No. And um, yeah, I was somewhat, he kind of had ideas of like, he's, he's, that store is like huge in terms of inventory and like the product they move and everything. And he's like, keep an eye out for another location. I'd love to have like a location kind of more where your area is. And, you know, these, it's just talk, right? Where you're just like, hey, maybe you can run it, blah, 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 blah. And um, basically uh, around, this would have been 2011-ish, you know? Uh, And the only place you could get like any kind of uh, uh, veggie, vegetarian, vegan food, anything like that late at night was uh, Yellow Deli. You know, and it kind of had a, you know, that place is just such a curiosity shop um, that, you know, like a lot of people are just kind of enthralled by the idea of that place existing more so like you could just go in at 4 a.m. and get a veggie burger and some chips. OK, cool. This is kind of what I've been looking for. <laughs> and so, uh, I, you know, after a show or something like that where nothing else is open and pop in there and just one of those situations where you look around, you're like, OK, there's a bunch of weirdos here at two in the morning and, you know, a lot of music people, you'd see band shirts, you'd see uh, presumably people that got out of practice or playing shows or whatever. They would just kind of hang out there and it's just a general issue weirdo hub, you know? And I'm like, well, why don't I just, I'm looking across the street and you remember Vista back then. It was Mm -hmm. that whole area was a ghost town. So it was like rent's cheap or there's a for sale sign right across the street from the place where all the weirdos hang out. I'm looking for a location to sell weirdo stuff. Why don't I just go to where the weirdos already are? Yeah. And that's where they were. And um, the uh, rent was nice. And, you know, I got to say the owner, uh, Martha Bozlich, the Bozlich family that owns that building, like. Really uh, nice people. uh, It's an understatement. I mean, they gave me my life essentially Mm because they, I mean, granted, it was an empty, you know, location. It was before breweries. It was not like a cool place to be by any means. Mind you, what I was selling or what I had in mind for the place wasn't really that cool either. You know, I was trying to sell obscure punk records and stuff, which are the kind of things that people, if you're, will travel to, you know, if you look at a lot of locations of like, say, Dr. Strange, it's in like East, East Riverside, but it would be a pilgrimage spot for a lot of people. You just, when you're selling niche things, people will come out to it. That's sort of how I saw the location. So it was like, I could be at the bottom of the sea. People are still going to find a way to get to it. So even if at that point it wasn't like a hustling and bustling hub, it was like, whatever, I'm selling weird stuff. People will come to me. That was a theory. And um, she just took such a chance on me. I can't imagine doing that myself, you know, when I'm just looking for, if you're looking, I mean, landlords get a bad rap in general, I think. But like, if you're just looking to get kind of mailbox money and have like an easy someone move into your place and send you some money and just relax and count your ducats, like, you're not taking a chance on a 30 year old kid who's never had any business experience whatsoever. I didn't know what a DBA was. I didn't have yeah. any understanding of any of that. And I just kind of, she just really uh, went out of her way to take a chance on me. And uh, you know, there's, I don't know, there's a little bit of an idea I think in small business owners have in general. And I'm, you talk to a lot of them. So maybe you see some of that where it's like, you just go and you do and you get it done. And it's an, I, your personal thing. It's like, no, 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 no one, no one gets shit done on their own. You know, like, yeah, I put my name on the lease. Yeah, I found the location and yeah, it all worked out. But like without her taking a chance on me, that's not happening. Right. Maybe arguably if there's less, you know, demand for it at that time, maybe they're a little bit more lenient about what they'll take a chance on. But yeah, that was, you know, just dumb luck, fate, permission from someone who was very kind, frankly. And uh, that relationship is still really good today and it all kind of worked out but yeah the fact that she was really kind and it was the location was already at a place that people kind of knew i felt like people knew the yellow deli you know alternative Mm -hmm. types or whatever so um yeah the the location that if not for the yellow deli and if not for uh the kind kind heart of martha (laughs) bozlich i would definitely not have that location and not be in vista well you know it's interesting because i think in the you know our Vista, our downtown is divided kind of in three 
sections. We've got like the historic downtown, right. we've got the Vista Village area, and then we've got the Santa Fe right. corridor. And I think, you know, I've been around Vista for about 20 years. Yeah. And so on the historic side, there's a lot of mix of just small owners who own like a building right, or right. or they own, you know, their family maybe had a shop there a long time ago. And now they're doing something else. And right. so there's a lot of personal investment in kind of hand choosing these tenants that are going to go in and do something good. And right. so when I talk to people in the downtown who've been around for a while or um, even people who are newer, they it, there's a, there seems to be a common thread around this relationship between landlords and tenants that there's been this kind of joint effort to be successful together yeah. and to invest back in the community in a way to like make a cool mix of stuff, yeah. um, particularly in the in the historic downtown side. Um, and so I think that's that's cool. I think that, you know, definitely Martha is an amazing person and, and your experience is definitely in the top tier. But I think there's quite a few people within the downtown that are. Um, at least, you know, over the 20 years, who have really just said, you know, I want to see something good go in yeah. here. I want to for my own longevity, but also for the good of the community and things like that. And let's get something cool going. So I think that's that's great. And um, and yeah, so you opened in 2012. Yeah. So you've been around a while. Yeah. And so you've seen a lot of changes in the town. Like, what do you think about all of the changes that have happened in the downtown since you opened up? Yeah, I mean, I've. I'm uh, I'm 40 now and I've grown up in this area um, my whole life, you know, and it's interesting, I feel, uh, at this point in life to kind of reflect on what that really means to be native to an area and really feel like a connection to everything. In that regard, I would say, like in the big long term scope of things, it feels like not much has changed. There is something very eternally North County about North County, you mm -hmm. know, and it, we could talk Vista, San Marcos, Esco, Carlsbad, Oceanside, all these places. It's Yeah, there's a veneer that'll get flushed over it. Like, you know, yeah, breweries were not there when I was there. Now there's a bunch of breweries. But it's still Vista. It's still North County. You know, there's still a level of, um, I don't know, uh, there's, a, there's some grime under there. There's some dirt. There's some kind of like street level, you know, attitude that's at play. So that kind of can remain but yeah it's just been it's a it's that same foundation just gussied up a bit you know <laughs> you still see uh you know people throwing up and being you know bored out of their minds and acting the way people who are bored out of their minds and living in a place that uh, is maybe a little depressing to live <laughs> will act <laughs> you know it's just again we 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 put different fonts on the building so it's uh you know more appealing to quote unquote investors <laughs> yeah well do you think though that there's more I mean, definitely. I mean, I live near downtown. Yeah. I'm in your store pretty frequently. My family, we all, my husband comes in, my kids come in. Um, and so it seems like there's more people in there yeah. like lately yeah. and there's more foot traffic and, you know, with restaurants nearby and other, other things. I mean, the, the yellow deli was kind of, like you said, the on Broadway, kind yeah. of the main game for a long time. And Absolutely. now there's other, other options and that things come and things go. And there's like this ebb and flow, but it does seem like there's like more foot traffic. Do you think it's easier to run it, to be successful in business now oh, with Jesus. the growth in the downtown? Or do you think it was easier before when it was a little more sleepy? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's so hard to say because I think any business is supposed to get a little bit busier as they go along. That's the goal. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I don't know how much of that is just, um, you know, building a clientele over the years mm -hmm. and how much of that is uh, stuff opening up. I mean, if I'm being honest, like I don't see... People who like records are people who like records mm -hmm. and that's a niche community and people who will pay money for records are people who will pay money for records. People who will walk into a store with the intention of buying something is uh, different than someone walking in and saying, oh, what's this? And then they walk in and they look around and then they leave and that right. can make you look busy. Uh, but in terms of, you know, being able to give Martha my money at the end of the month, <laughs> you need people who yeah. actually want records. And that is I I don't know. I kind of think that's at least the way I run the store, th that's sort of a market that's somewhat autonomous from the businesses around it, you okay. know, because I don't have, I don't have, I don't have tchotchkes. I don't have like stuff nope. for people. I kind of intentionally alienate anyone who is just a casual walk around kind of person. So, you know, there's nothing in there for anyone who doesn't want to buy records. And that's by design, which is um, probably 
uh, says something about my understanding <laughs> how, how I do business. Well, but you sell online too. Sure. Yeah. But I sell records online. Right. To other people who want to buy records. Sure. Um, so, I mean, like I said, that is that business I would say is somewhat autonomous from everything around it. People who are there for the ice cream place, they'll walk into your store, they'll breathe your air and everything, but they're not, you know, maybe they'll, it'll be a note in their head, yeah. but they're not spending money. So it's such, it's just such a weird thing that I sell. You know what I'm saying? I think mm-hmm. that's the ultimate um, point here is that I sell something that's so odd that your average person, it's not, you know, sunglasses and, you know, t-shirts. It's right. weird stuff. So no, I get it. I get it. At j Auto Body and Paint, you don't have to worry about a thing. From minor dents and dings to major collision repair, we offer a worry, hassle-free experience with superior customer service. Our auto claim advisors work directly with your insurance company, so you don't have to deal with the headaches. Our certified technicians work on all makes and models to get your repair done right the first time. We stand behind our work with a lifetime warranty. Locally and family owned, JR Auto Body is here to serve the community. Call us today at 760-724-4923. Hi, it's Carrie from Solitube Home in Vista, California. If you're looking for ways to brighten and cool your home, we are your natural light and fresh air experts. We offer a selection of daylighting and ventilation products to help make your home beautiful and comfortable. And the best part of all is you won't be using any electricity to brighten up. We can bring beautiful, natural light into those dark spaces in your home, transforming them into beautifully lit spaces in less than two hours. No mess, no fuss, just amazing natural light to make your home look and feel great. If you're looking to cool off your home, we have a complete line of ventilation products to keep your home and garage cool. We want to make cooling and refreshing your home easier and more energy efficient than ever with our line of whole house fans, solar attic fans, and garage fans. Our certified installers carry the full line of Solitube daylighting and ventilation products on their vans at all times. Installation can usually be done in about two hours. No messy drywall, paint repair, structural changes, or re-roofing needed. It's pretty much the easiest home improvement project you'll ever take on. At Solitube Home, we offer no obligation appointments throughout Southern California. Visit our website at solitubehome.com or stop by our showroom conveniently located in Vista at 2210 Oak Ridge Drive, or give us a call, 619-375-1629. We look forward to brightening your day. For more than 60 years, Tri-City Medical Center has been committed to advancing the health and wellness of the community we serve. With leading edge emergency care, including top rated heart and stroke programs, advanced orthopedics, primary care, obstetrics, and neonatal care, Tri-City stands at the ready when you need us most. Learn more at tricitymed.org. I do think more people are returning to yeah. records. Like there's people who maybe, like, for example, my husband, he had a huge Rubbermaid tote of records in our garage for yeah. a really long time. And about six or seven years ago, I pulled out this thing and was like, you have all these records. Like, yeah. why aren't we listening to these? Right. <laughs> He's like, well, I don't have a record player. So I got him a record player yeah. for Christmas. He, we busted out all the albums. They were all like in great condition. Yeah. And then that set us on this path where, you know, before six or seven years ago, we weren't consuming records. We weren't buying any new records. We weren't looking for them. Um, You know, it was mostly like at that time, like digital music, you know, getting, you know, music online. And so, um, but now we have two young kids. And so like for Christmas, they got albums of their favorite artists. Now they're artists that they love are putting out records again. You can buy stuff on vinyl. So it's, I feel like there's new customers yeah coming is that right am i is that just because my family is a consumer or is that a real thing um yeah no i think that's i mean i do think that and and my my faith from the beginning is that you know records do have a utility and a function and that's sort of what i'm interested in is the function and utility and that's not to say that there isn't some validity to the collect collector nature of it in terms of wanting an original pressing there's yeah utility behind that and there's a, a reason for wanting a record in really nice shape um so uh i just think it's a good product <laughs> i don't know i think it's yeah. a good medium and i've always kind of just felt that as a way of con- consuming music it's like yeah if you really like music you're gonna find records naturally one way or the other if yeah. you dive deeper into it and you know if you i don't know have faith in what you're selling i guess or believe in what you're selling or use what you're selling yourself, you know, it's not 
surprising to me, I guess. It's sort of just like, yeah, welcome, welcome aboard. This is, this is, this is why these are here. <laughs> Speaking of that, when you say welcome aboard. Yeah. So, you know, obviously you talk about liking hardcore music right. and you wanted a space to like for punk stuff. Yeah. And, and so, but like when I come into your store, like I'm probably looking for like Dolly Parton or something. Yeah. Right. But I totally feel welcome there and nobody like judges me, at least not to my face yeah. um, that I'm like, Hey, do you have this Dolly Parton album? Like, so how do you maintain a culture of like being cool and punk and all of those things that I'm not, <laughs> but like still got being you, nice to you. like this SUV driving mom yeah. who's looking for Dolly Parton well, record. Uh, you start by not being very cool or punk <laughs> and um, from there. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I think people have a idea of record stores where it's like you walk in and you feel judged there. Yeah. And that's a common thing I hear. You, you hear that it, people will say that about like going to the gym too. Yeah. But when you actually go to the gym, it's like, no one really gives a, shit. you know, ultimately no, and that's in a weird way. And this is just, you know, a, a philosophical musing. I think kind of a harder pill to swallow is that no one cares. Like it, it's more yeah. appealing in a way to think that when you go into the, the hip young establishment and by and, uh, no one's hip or young around here, you know, again, North County, we're not, if we were really cool, we wouldn't be in Vista, you know? So it's not that cool. I disagree. I do think Vista's cool. <laughs> I'm just saying it's not like, you know, it, there's difference. It's not like, you know, you're walking into some, uh, you know, uh, New York City spot or you right. know, someplace where it was a little bit more of an edge or whatever, you know, no one's that cool. So if you there's an idea that you walk in and people are just going to look, you go, oh, what do you want? You want a Bonnie Raid album? Oh, like that's a lame thing or whatever. But it's like, I don't know. Well, first of all, I, I want money from people. So I'm not going to overtly try to be a dick. I'm naturally a dick. So there's like kind of a balancing act to walk there. But I also just, I mean, I put, you know, uh, punk music as like a super important foundational part of my music, uh, you know, experience. But I just, I just like music. Most people who work at record stores just like music, you know, it's, you can't be around this stuff and have like a really myopic view. And even if you did, again, you want money from people. So be nice to them. I think a lot of the judgments that people feel from record stores in general are sort of just personal insecurities. You know, yeah. I would say if you walk into the store and you don't feel judged or it's because you're just secure in yourself and it doesn't, I don't know. I, I feel like the uh, record store clerk does or any clerk or anyone else in the world doesn't really, who isn't, if they're not pelting you with rotten fruit or something that the way you feel judged or belittled is to them. And then, you know, as far as like just demeanor of a business, you know, there is, I think it would be a little weird if you walked into a record store and they treated you like you walked into Nordstrom's where it's like, how can I do for you today? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What are you looking for? Okay. Well, let's go right over here and check that out. Okay. Well, let's get out. You know, if you're like that, too much. it's too much. Yeah. Don't you do that. want a little bit of like, Hey, how's it going? All right, cool. Like you just need a little bit of like, you know, you know how to look space. for things. You want space yeah. just to like, it out yeah and i mean that's just i mean for me i mean i grew up working at like video stores and stuff so like i retail is just i, I was working retail so young that it's just that i don't know I, I, I like it as far as a means of social interaction i always compare it to like bowling when you put up the bumpers on like the gutters you know like if you're in the retail interaction people talking it's not there, there's there's sort of like a safety net you know we're not going to get into our childhood traumas or you know weird sex life kinks when we're, you know, shopping for records. You can be like, Hey, can I help you some? All right, cool. Let me know. All right. You're just taking this. Okay, cool. Like, you know, yeah. you're on rails sort of. So again, if you can be in a situation like that and feel judged and say, that's again, that's just a personal issue for you. That's a you problem. Okay. <laughs> I, all right, good. Well, I'm glad I don't feel judged. There okay. you go. Um, Speaks well to your sense of self-security. Okay. Good. Thank you. I have a decent self-esteem. That's good to know. So what's your favorite thing about, about your work? What's your favorite thing about standard record store? I mean, I think in to be useful is I think under reported in uh, culture and it's probably the most important thing. I think if you really boil down even a lot of like, spiritual practices, religions, philosophies, ideologies, they 
sort of in some way or another at some point will just be about being useful to someone, serving a purpose, right? Yeah. And it's a weird purpose to serve for sure, um, to be like a place where you can walk in and, you know, buy a, a Dio record or something. But um, it is when on, I started to really notice this like around like Christmas time and stuff, people come in for gift certificates, which doesn't, you know, that seems blase or something that, you know, would be commonplace for retail. And it is. But if you were a place that didn't exist before and you made that place exist again through cooperation of community and everyone else. Now there was a place that wasn't there. And now not only are you, do you exist, but people come to you for gifts for someone. Someone is going to open that on Christmas day and be like, Oh wow, cool. A, you know, a gift certificate to go to a place, you know, like that's in a way, again, it's commonplace, but it's also putting faith that that place is going to be there <laughs> the next day, yeah. which is, that's not nothing, man, you know? And yeah, it's like, I don't know. I have such uh, uh, limited skills in life and limited interests and abilities. You know, I'm just not like a particularly uh, talented person. And I wasn't like, I don't know, I'm not like from a family that has an industry like, oh, we're farmers. We're going to teach you how to farm and right. you're going to farm. It was like, kind of was just thrown out in, in into this place, you know, and have to kind of sort myself out. And for whatever reason, my interest of, uh, you know, music and thus uh, records has been able to parlay itself into a way where I can make a living off of it. And, and this is the important part, uh, be useful to people serve a function to people. Some of the people walk in, do you have this record? You say yes, and you show it to them and you have it. That's, that's a minor miracle, you know, <laughs> granted 90% of the time is no, because they're asking for weird shit. But <laughs> yeah. when you can do that, that's, that's, that's incredible. And you end up making um, connections with people in terms of like, oh, when you get these kind of records, let me know. You, regulars come in, you say, hey, I got, you know how you were looking for that last time? Well, it came in, here you go. You're serving a purpose. You're a cog in the machine. That that gets painted in a really uh, ill light, I think. And that's kind of my point here, right? When I say that the serving a purpose is sort of um, the, we, we don't put the right kind of importance on it. Just that phrase, I'm a cog in a machine. That has like a negative connotation, right? Be a cog, man. Like being a cog is crazy. I've been not a cog for a very long time in my life, like long stretches where I was just, you know, not very useful to anyone. Being a cog is great if you can be compensated properly for the efforts you put in. You know, you don't want to be overworked and underpaid. That's not good for anyone. That's not that's a, not a healthy relationship. But I feel that I'm compensated for the utility that I give to the community. And that is insane. That is very rare. That is, again, a, a, a miracle of miracles. And I don't take that for granted. Most people are things they're interested in. They can never really parlay into a career. And if they can, let's say you're good with numbers, right? And you work in a bank. That's great. You know, you, you, you're, you're serving a purpose. Don't get me wrong. And maybe you're getting compensated for it even. That's very great and a very lucky uh, place to find yourself. But I don't know that you feel that sense of purpose because mm -hmm. you're kind of pushing paper around. When you see someone's face, when they get excited because you found something for them, that's a different level of utility or that's a different sort of compensation you can get for that utility. No, it's not, that's a comp, it's a long answer, <laughs> but it's a, it's a complete one. Uh, yeah. Being able to be useful. That's my favorite uh, part about having, having this job. Very rare. I think very difficult to find. Well, and I think it's rare um, to have something that you love and they get to be around that thing and get to celebrate that thing and do that thing. And, and to be paid for it all the time is that's a really, that's a unique thing. Yeah. It's a cool place to be. I don't mean to get too, uh, you know, uh, uh, lighting some sage around me while I say this or anything, but like, you know, if there is a spiritual path I have followed in life, it's um, really a dedication to music, you know, it's an odd one, I know, but like, that's just how my brain's wired. It's just all in on music, you know, and to be able to find myself in a place where I can yeah, pay rent and all that. It's amazing. Very rare. Awesome. Um, okay. 
Um, let's see. I wanted to ask you about trends and staying current, but I have right. a feeling you don't really care about that too much. But I do want to yeah. ask you recently, this is maybe like a year or two ago. I saw something you had, had online about like a pokey stop or like Pokemon something. Right, right, right. right. So tell me like, that's a trend. That's a sure. cool new thing. Right. <laughs> or at least it was. So what made you collaborate or like be a pokey stop or whatever? I don't even remember what it was. It was like a Pokemon training. All right. So it, tell it, me, help me out here. What, what, what am I talking about? Vista, I'm going to put you on to a, a, a underground culture um, okay. called Pokemon Go players, uh, which exists and is thriving in this area, which you wouldn't know unless you had this played this stupid game every day like I do. No, I'm just obsessed with this dumb game. I played it every day of my life for seven years now. Wow, Pokemon Go? Pokemon Go, every day of my life, seven years, is dedicated to this uh, game on my phone. My nine-year-old son's also pretty into it. That's the level of intellect you need to have <laughs> to be invested into this game. And his name's game. Colin as okay, well, so there, there we you go. go. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm obsessed with this stupid game, and they had something, I mean, these companies, uh, they, they, they try to, like, uh, you know, make themselves sound nice or whatever, but they're like, we're having... Uh, you can, you, you, if you're a business, you can kind of pay to have your thing made into uh, a, a gym in Pokemon Go. And, um, and a gym is like a place where people go to yeah, find the Pokemon exactly. or like or, have a battle or whatever. Yeah, the more okay. gyms and stops that are in a location, the more it will draw people to play to that location to play the game because there's just more activity okay. going on in it. And the downtown Vista has always, since the game's inception, been like a big hub for it. Yeah, like all, like all the kites and all the like different yeah, they all things. get turned into things in the game that you can uh, play with. And the company was like, hey, for business, small business relief, right, we're going to like let any business that wants to be tell us why you can you want to be a Pokemon stop. And so I was just like, I just want to have another stop to <laughs> swipe to get more stuff from the game. So I just was like, ah, me. And then I wrote a, a, a BS essay to kind of <laughs> get them to do it and had some friends copy and paste that BS essay and they, they, they turned it into uh, another stop, but that doesn't have any bearing on like, uh, you know, visibility or anything. It's just a weird thing for people in the game to play. But it was it's kind of cool that it got turned into that in the game. So I'm sensing a, tre a thread here that you only do the things that are like fun for you. Yeah, right? it's, it's, so like you a, it's like a, there's a mind of a child you, in my brain and I don't do so it. So it's not that Pokemon was cool to <laughs> no, other people and going to bring I people in. I played it every day play. of my life. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's what this stupid game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My son is like always begging me for like money to buy like more Oh, don't do that. Memory or toys. Yeah, or no, I, I don't, don't give do him. I don't give him any money. I'm like free only. No, no, no. Yeah. That's a free to play yeah. game. Yeah. 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 Okay. Anything else about standards that you want people to know that we didn't talk about? Uh, do you, you have any, like, do you do events? I try not to. Okay. Just follow us on Instagram. How about that? You know what we do? We have, I've been, I, 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 every week I'll, I have a YouTube channel and every week I yes. go on and I, uh, I talk with Dylan about the, my, my other employee, one of the other employees that works there about, uh, records we got in. So you can kind of see what we have, even if you're, uh, keep up on what we get regularly, even if you don't come in the store. Um, I think if you click on our Instagram, any of the socials, they're all linked, uh, uh, standards record store on insta and you can uh, see the youtube videos on the channel we work kind of hard on them so that's a that's a fun little thing that we got that's something right yeah and okay. i have to tell you so when you post those my husband looks at them yes. and he has in, several times gotten in the car and come over right away and bought something <laughs> so goal. it works right yes. it works it it's does. working it does yeah for all yeah. The, the evils of social media that we yeah. like to say hey helps me move some units so that's something <laughs> yeah he'll say i'm he'll be leaving i'm like where are you going he's like standards i'm like did they post he's like yep i gotta go get something i'm like okay that's, go for how, it. that's how it's done there that's you how go it's done. okay all right the end of every episode okay. i always do a couple rapid fire questions yes. so i'm gonna ask you tell me a book that ever you think people should read um read a read a read a, read a comic book read read watchman one of the it's the best comic book the best, the best comic book. I wouldn't say that best. It's wow, a, that's it's a, like high praise. There's a the, lot of comic books. Yeah, I, it, it's uh, it's uh, kind of like one. It's like was on the. It's the only comic that was. I think it's the only comic that was on the New York Times like best fifty books of uh, the twentieth century. Okay. It's like a very celebrated book. I'm not saying anything. I'm not talking out of out of out of airs here. But okay. uh, yeah, I, I like I like comics a lot, and that's like a that's a very uh, that's one that you can just pick up and. And read. So I'll say everyone should read Watchmen. Alan Moore is uh, one of my favorite writers. Where do you get comic books in here in Vista? Uh, I, I l listen, 
I, I'm, um, you, you started me on a tangent here. Uh, 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 bear down. Um, <laughs> the best comic book shop is probably your library. If your comic, oh. book, if your if your library and the people who stock it are worth the salt, I think if you want to find comics that are outside of like the weird like superhero fanboy thing that the medium gets kind of pigeonholed as if you walk into a comic shop, it's kind of confusing. And there's, I know that I, I know there's a shop in uh, San Marcos and I'm really frustrated that I can't remember the name of it. There's also uh, comics and stuff in the mall at the murder mall in Carlsbad. I don't think Vista specifically has a comic shop, um, but it's those places are super intimidating because you walk in and it's like just Nightwing and all these like weird superhero stuff that's like you know important to the people that follow it but if you're outside of it it's yeah way too intimidating well, i love the library plug because yes. you know i think people really underutilize the library there's so many amazing fight things that you can get the library and i didn't even think about comic books so look, you look, up, uh, I'll go, look it up yes go and look up a, a big name comic like a like a watchman or a uh, mouse or uh you know any, any any kind of like graphic novel you've heard of look it up and wherever it's located go there and just look at all the graphic novels they have and and pick out one and or two and read them. It's I don't know. I, I feel like I'm I'm um it, it's strange to see like comic like superhero movies get very popular, but comic book literacy just kind of completely decline. So I'm a very uh, avid champion of <laughs> of uh, people reading uh, more comics and graphic novels and stuff in the library. And you know what's one of the the absolute best places I would say in all of San Diego to uh, read comics is. The library at Palomar, because there's one guy who runs a history of comic book courses oh. class there, and he makes that that I I cannot tell you if you really want to learn about a medium, just go sit. You don't have to check it out. You don't have to be a, a Palomar College student. Just go to the Palomar College Library, find their comic book section, and just every great work is there on wow. the shelf okay. for free, and you can uh, have your you know look up any list of greatest graphic novels, greatest uh, comic books. And I promise you at least one in 10 that's on that list will be on the shelf at Palomar College. And that's, to me, the best place. But your library, I go to Carlsbad Library a lot and okay. check them out. All right. Way too long of an answer for that. Okay, yeah. so this one might be hard for you since you love music so much, but um, tell me a song, a song you love. You, uh, you could even say an album if you want, but what's your jam? I, my, 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 my stock answer is uh, uh, the song uh, The Tiger from ABBA. Um, I think it's, it's, a uh, it's a perfect song. I think song, a song is like kind of a, um, art in itself, mm -hmm. right? It has to be self-contained, usually three and a half minutes, whatever you, you're, the, whatever you put the mark at. A song has to be a song. Uh, you know, I love, I love Bob Dylan stuff, right? But it's like, I don't know that those are juke, ju jukebox hits <laughs> for right. the most part. You know, you have to listen to the whole record and like th that record sits in a place and his catalog and that catalog sits in a place in American history. Like you have to really have context for, uh, for a good Bob Dylan song. Whereas Abba's the tiger, any place, anywhere, anytime that song comes on, it's, it's perfection. Everything I really love about music is in that song. Wow. That's a great answer. And pr not at all what I expected you to say. Well, I mean, you said songs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a, who wrote better songs than Abba really? That. Uh, very few people surprised me. That was a very surprising answer, and I love it. Love it. Um, okay, tell me something that inspires you. Um, that's a, that's, don't ask middle-aged men that question. <laughs> We've run out of shit. <laughs> We've got nothing. No up. inspiration. Uh, uh, you know, the bills I got to pay <laughs> okay. inspire me to get out of bed in the morning and that's fair. go totally to work fair. and solve problems, you know. And be useful. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Tell me, last question. Tell me a Vista business you think deserves a shout out. I want to, I want to give some love to American Tattoo. That's a place that um, kind of weirdly has grown with uh, my business. They were in Bonzel and they had to fight tooth and nail to uh, get uh, to Vista. They're like kind of right around the corner from the shop. All the, all the folks there are doing great work. And uh, yeah, I don't think there's any business I've spent as many hours in <laughs> in Vista as other than my own as uh, that spot. Um, so yeah, American Tattoo in in Vista, always a shout out to them. Great, awesome. Well, I want to say thank you so much, Colin, for being thank here you. today. Uh, thank you to our guest, Colin Tappy, and thank you for listening to Velocity.
If you like what you heard, please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and tell a friend. Help us move Vista forward with Velocity. The Vista Chamber of Commerce is a nonprofit organization that serves as a catalyst for business growth. Find us online at vistachamber.com.